Sterling City, California is a small town, small city. Very safe, very quiet. It's a great, generally, this is a very great place to raise a family. Things started changing several years ago when when that uh, reports started coming in of, of of kids, mostly middle school age, starting to see a tall, very slender, slim man, kind of just hanging out, watching them, generally off in the shadows, always wearing a black suit, usually with a red tie, sometimes a black one. What, what, the, what, the peop, what people thought was interesting is that kids always mentioned how worried they felt whenever they saw, saw this man. That was one of the great details about his clothing. But for whatever reason, none of them could ever remember his face. They always said it was just a very pale, blank expression where there should have been more detail. You know, after a couple months of months of this, people started started writing it off as kids being kids. But then one Friday morning, very early, about five or six in the morning, uh, a man by the name of George Elkins went to wake his two daughters up in order to get, start getting them ready for school. He went into the room the two of them shared, and they realized that. That, that the older, his, his older daughter, Katrina, wasn't there. Now, it was, you know, understandably, he started looking, looking around the house, seeing if she was hiding, hiding somewhere, because one thing he was very aware of, she did look like a hide-and-seek. But then he started realizing that he couldn't find her. You know, the windows were closed and locked, as, as always. Her bed wasn't disturbed at all. She was just gone. He, he, he then woke up his, his, his younger daughter, Alice, and asked her, hey, have you seen Katrina at all? Man, I'm having trouble finding her. It's, it's at this point that Alice said, oh, last night about midnight, I saw her outside in the backyard talking with a man in the black suits and the red tie. George started asking for more deep, for more information from her. It's this kind of like, what do you look like? Were you able to understand what they were saying? Where, where do you know where they, where they, you know, where they, where this man went? If anything, Alice recently responded, "No, I remember what he was wearing. I can't, don't remember anything else about what, what the man looked like." So, George, George, being as curious as he was, went out back. Couldn't find anything, and simply, simply decided to go back inside and maybe wash up a little bit, see if Katrina maybe fell asleep in the closet in one of her hiding fits, and went from there. After he finished up, he realized Katrina still wasn't wasn't here. So, he, so he, so he decided to call the cops and report her missing, and in time to say, hey, maybe something's up. It's it's very much unlike Katrina to do things like this. Next thing you know, six months later, people still couldn't find Katrina. And she had just simply vanished. And the last known report of her was talking with her talking with this tall man with no face. A month later, the, the local library suddenly went up in flames. During the investigation afterwards, it was, it was determined it was simply an electrical fire that burned the building down. But what was disturbing is that under some of the rubble, they found the body of the young Katrina. And what was most shocking is there was no damage to the body. She was simply passed away. And, and, and late, late, and during, during the autopsy, no damage. And during the, this investigation, the, the cops were able to find out from a couple of people that stand outside the buildings that they saw a man kind of
and is standing inside the library, but no one would ever remember him going in or coming out. But they did see him in during in the library during the flood the fire. What made this a little bit personal for me is that when I left the office the office of the local newspaper one, one evening on a late night, walk up in my car, unlock the door, and on the driver's seat, I find this note a tall man wearing a suit. It's at this point that it seems oddly personal because not only is this a new detail, but it's it appears that whoever this man is might be increasing the reach of who he's looking for. This is why I decided to leave my job with the newspaper and move up here in, in, in an attempt to seek some, some simple peace of mind. And it's with that, fellow Toastmasters, I wish that hopefully whoever this is hasn't followed me up here. <laughs> Tom? You know, there was a tall, slender man that I saw <laughs> earlier tonight. You beat me to it. Alright, evaluator number one. Are you ready or not? Of course. You don't have to be. I you can be. Okay. 